Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so this video is actually a request from you guys. Okay, someone asked me to do a deep dive to explain the difference between emission and also immunity. I think this also quite curious. What is the key difference between radiate and also conducted? Okay, so for the objective of this video is to clearly distinguish what is emission, what is immunity, what is the key difference between radiate and also conducted. This will be the part 53 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's understand the key difference between emission and also immunity. Maybe let's understand the background why we need to do this form of test. Conducting the electromagnetic interference, okay, which is also known as EMI, and electromagnetic sustainability, which is also known as EMS. Okay, so these tests, they are all critical steps when we want to introduce a new product to the market. In general, these tests can be categorized into two main categories, emission, and also immunity testing. Let's come to the emission first. Okay, emission testing measure the amount of electromagnetic generated by a device during normal operation. Okay, for example, this laptop, okay, we actually set it under the normal operation. So under the emission means that we actually measure the amount of electromagnetic wave that is released by this device. The purpose of this test is to ensure that any emission from the device are below the relevant limit defined for that device type. For example, laptop basically will have their own so-called limit line. Okay, so any device, okay, basically they have their own limit line. So the purpose of doing this emission test is to ensure that any emission from the device are below the limit line. Okay, so this in turn will ensure that there is reasonable assurance that the device will not cause damaging interference with other devices operate within the expected environment. So in short, if we control the amount of emission from the new product that we want to introduce in the market, they will not cause an issue by becoming an interference with those devices that work in the same environment. Okay, so this is a definition for emission. Let's move on to immunity. Okay, immunity tests assess how a device reacts when exposed to disturbance such as electromagnetic noise. For example, this is the laptop. Okay, what we do is basically we introduce some electromagnetic wave as noise to disturb your DUT and we want to see whether your DUT still can function or not. Okay, so the purpose of this test is to ensure reasonable confidence that the device will perform as intent within its expected operating environment. Again, when you actually introduce this new product, okay, if this product unable to work in a certain environment, okay, this can be a very bad reputation for your company. Hence, okay, we must have some form of confidence to ensure that the device that we in newly introduced to the market, they must be able to operate as intent, okay, in the intent environment. Okay, so basically this is the definition for the immunity testing. Why we need to test both emission and immunity? Okay, so in, in Europe, basically we need to do the testing emission and immunity. In US, okay, we only mainly focus on emission. Okay, but let's focus on the CE standard as for now. Testing all four aspects, i.e. 
C E R I and C I radiate emission, conducted emission, radiate immunity, conducted immunity. Give your product the best chance to meet the EMC standard. Okay, we must ensure that our product, newly introduced product, okay, they must have the best chance to pass all the EMC standard so that they will be able to work in this intent environment. Fortunately, a product that is well designed in one aspect tends to perform well in the others and improving either emission or immunity performance can give the other aspect a boost as well. A well designed, for example, if you want to design a good emission, it actually also provides some robust in terms of the immunity. So therefore, when we actually improve the emission, we somehow also indirectly improve the immunity. Vice versa, when we actually want to improve the immunity, we also somehow will also improve the emission. So therefore, they actually give the other aspect a boost as well. Okay, so we have done the discussion on emission and immunity. So now what I want to do will be focusing on conducted and also radiate. Okay, so this is your DUT. Okay, so you can see that I actually split them into two portion. Okay, this is immunity. This is emission, which I have finished discussion. Immunity is simply the noise, electromagnetic noise they actually send into your EUT. As for emission, okay, basically will be the electromagnetic wave that is released by your EUT. Over here, you can see that there are many two sources. One, the conducted is basically from the wire. Okay, so for example, when we actually do the immunity, we inject the noise into the cable or wire, okay, the through or also the input and output ports, etc. Okay, so from the emission, you can see that on the conductor emission, again, okay, we want to measure your EUT, how much electromagnetic wave that is released from the cable. Okay, so basically, this is what we lump as conducted. In short, conducted, mainly all the activities will be confined into cables. Okay, whether is it power supply, input and output cables, etc., so mainly is through the cables. As for radiate, is mainly through the air, as you can see from here. Okay, again, immunity is something that we actually send into your DUT. Okay, so basically over here you can see that air is the medium. We actually generate an electromagnetic noise to disturb your DUT and see whether it can function or not. So basically, this is what we call under radiate. Okay, as for emission, you can also see that the antenna here measure how much emission okay, basically released by the EUT through the air as a medium. So now, hopefully, you have a better understanding of okay, the key difference between conducted and radiate. One is purely on the cable. Another one radiate is purely using air as a medium. Let me do a very quick conclusion on conducted versus radiate. Okay, conducted emission, okay, testing involves measuring the energy existing your product via power supply, data input and output ports, or any other cable which will have current flow. Okay, remember when current flow, I'm not sure whether you still remember, I think it should be Eddie Law. Okay, basically there will be some form of radiation. Okay, so with this, you actually in, unintentionally release the electromagnetic wave into the environment. Okay, so this measurement is typically conducted at lower frequency. So therefore, for CE, typically they are all conducted at lower frequency. As for conducted immunity testing, okay, they basically evaluate your product resistant to RF energy entering the system through the same port, okay, through the same cable power supply cable, data input and output cable, or any form of cable. Okay, so what happened here is basically all the RF energy or all the RF noise actually enter through the cable to test your DUT, whether it still can function normally or not. In contrast, okay, radiate emission testing 
review the electromagnetic wave that actually escaped from the operating product via air as medium and is usually measured at higher frequency. So RE is typically measured at higher frequency. As for CE, it's lower frequency. Radiant immunity testing actually demonstrate the product resilience when actually exposed to EM wave at specific field strength through the medium air. Okay, so this will be a good comparison between conducted and radiate. Okay, conducted in short, basically all the activities happen with the wire. As for radiate emission, the medium is actually air. How EMC lab measure emission and immunity? Conducted emission and conducted immunity are usually measured in books and ampere, okay, but they are often expressed in dB form. Radiate emission limit and radiate immunity levels are all measured in volts and ampere per meter. Okay, so over here, you can see that anything through the air, we actually measure either volts per meter or ampere per meter. As for conducted emission and conducted immunity, we measure either by voltage or by current ampere, or we can actually express them in a decibel format. So what, why there's a bit different between this? Okay, radiate testing concern the field strength of electromagnetic wave. Okay, radiate is through the air, so basically the testing is to concern okay, how much is the field strength of the wave. Okay, using the antenna to measure or transmit those electromagnetic waves, depending whether you are doing RE or RI. Okay, the permitter qualifier is a fundamental aspect of describing wave behavior. Okay, without it, the measurement means nothing. Okay, let's come quickly on the EMC standard level and limit. Okay, there are a variety of EMC standard committee responsible for determining acceptable immunity level and emission limits. Okay, so basically the committee, okay, as and when they will do an update on the immunity level and also the emission limit line. Okay, this decision is based on the mix of known and expected electromagnetic wave environment condition in which the product is expected to operate seamlessly okay so because these committee people they know exactly okay the so-called your eut or your dut get okay, the kind of environment whether there will be a further so-called uh, noise that need to be considered basically will be decided by this committee here the harsher the environment the stricter the requirement okay so in short a lot of the tests okay, for a few companies that i know of Okay, they don't actually want to test just basically to pass the test. They actually want to test the test in a harsher environment so that they are more stricter than the requirement. So they are very confident of their product. However, the same product can have different EMC emission and immunity requirement if it's used in more than one environment. Okay, for example, we can use the product either in an industry environment or at the home environment. And therefore, in such a case, you can simply target the most stringent requirement, which is the industry requirement. It's always better to have exceptional performance in less stringent environment than to fall short of the standard where it matters most. This is what I mean. Okay, a lot of organization, big organization, they actually set a harsher EMC test level. So in short, they actually inject okay, more so-called electromagnetic wave for the immunity. And the emission limit line, they actually make it more stringent. To do all this so as to ensure that they have a huge confidence that the product will be able to pass the EMC. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.